the whole Bible, where the word Easter appears, that is in Acts chapter 12, verse 4. So the same word that has been translated Passover has now been translated Easter, but it is Pascha or Passover from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and we still call it Pascha or Passover. The word Easter is not a Christian word. Actually, it's a pagan word. Easter comes from the word Eshtar, which is a Babylonian goddess who used to be worshipped by the Babylonians. Uh, she was a goddess, and they would worship that goddess. So during the Roman Empire and the time that people were oppressed, were still in Egypt and all that thing, they began to uh, move this word the, on the day of, uh, of the Passover, these Babylonians will begin to say, oh, it's Ishtar, it's Ishtar, meaning that it's Easter. And people and Christians uh, were saying, oh, it's Easter, it's Easter. That's how it all started. But what happened for the, because of the grace of God, this word Easter, later on translated to be used by Christians, you would wonder how that happened subliminary messages began to came it eventually lost the power of the goddess esther so christians began to capitalize and began to do their passover rituals over this very day so the babylonian celebration was now kind of like stopped and it was it, be, it didn't become now practical to do it on their Ishtar, which is easter now but christians they began to uh, practice Passover uh, during uh, the time of Easter. So all around the world, this is the root word, the meaning of this root word, Easter. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be Amen. to God. Praise be to God. Let's mute if we can. Um, let's, today what I'm going to do I'm going to ask seven people to read with me these scriptures so that we are enjoying Easter, Good Friday together. Um, let me ask uh, according to the order on my computer here. I'm going to say, a Laureate, you're going to be number one. Uh, then we come to Taku, number two, number three. Tonde, number four, there's Piola. Number five, there's Betsy. If you can't read, let me know. But if you can, please try to show your face. Betsy is number what? Number five. Uh, Elizabeth is number six. Bridget, number seven. Okay. One, Lori, two, Taku, three, ta Tonde, four, Piola, five, Betsy, six, Elizabeth, seven, Bridget. If you can't show your face, if you can't, Read, let me know. Would you also like me to record? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. You've got the rights, right? You got you got the no, I, I don't have the okay. I apologize. Uh so we're gonna have seven people reading. Okay. Recording in progress. Okay, for now, I'm going to have seven people. Um, I think because we have another one, which is very long, I'm going to need the eighth person who is on my left here. Can I have now even a uh, shepherd right there? Okay, right. So let's have number one. Let's read all of us if you've got your Bible and you don't read your Bible. Today is your opportunity to read the, um, the Bible, okay? Today is your opportunity. Okay. Instead of shepherd to read Tapiwa, can you read? Okay. All right. So number one. You're going to read Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 29. Number one, 
Number two, you're going to read Mark chapter 15, verse 21 to verse 30. Number three, you're going to read Mark 15, verse 30 to 41. Number five, am I right? You're going to read Isaiah 53? No, oh, number four. Number you four, you're going to... Okay, number four, Isaiah, are you sure? Okay, number one, I'll start again. Number one, Matthew 26, verse 26 to 29. Number two, Mark chapter 15, verse 21 to 30. Number three, Mark 15, verse 31 to 41. Number four. I don't know. Anyway, the next one you read, Mark. Mark, okay. I didn't put my numbers here. Mark chapter 15, verse 21. Hmm. Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 7. And then John 11, verse 48. Verse 48 to 53. Then the next one, Romans 5, verse 5, 12 to 15. And then we have number 7, I think, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 12. Okay. If you have got your Bible, take your Bible. Let's do this together. It's an opportunity. Some of us, we don't have time to read our Bibles. Follow with your Bible, Mark these scriptures that's what will help you as a christian to understand easter amen all right number one let's go now number one matthew 26 verse 26 to 29 matthew 26 verse 26 to 29 it says while they were eating jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Amen. Number two, let's go to myth, um, Mark chapter 15, verse 21 to verse 30. Uh, Pastor, that's number four. I'm number four. That's number no, two. No, that's number two. You check the, check the, the verses that the I chart. put in the chat. Mark chapter 15, verse 21 to 30. Mark 15, 21 to 30 says, A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander, and Rufus was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with mire, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. Then, re then written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by held insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. Mark 15, verse 31 to 41. Mark 15, verse 31 to 41. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him. 
among themselves. He saved others, they say. He can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe those, those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in, in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lemasabitan, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near this, when, when some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine and vinegar, put it on his staff and offered to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. He said, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed out his life. The curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were, uh, were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, uh, and the younger uh, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 7. Isaiah, that's in Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Verse 3 to 7. Isaiah 53, 3 to 7, and it says, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Mm. He was pierced for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We, are, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers in silence. So he did not open his mouth. Amen. Mm. Powerful. You feel like just ending there. Let's go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verse 48 to 53. The book of if, John, St. John in the New Testament. Back if to we, New Testament. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Hmm. Uh, let's go to the next one. Thank you, Selizy. Let's go to, the, to Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 15. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 15. Who is reading? Okay, sin came into the world through one man, and his sin brought death 
with it. As a result, death has spread to the whole human race because everyone has sinned. There was sin in the world before the law was given, but where there is no law, no account is kept of sins. But from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, death ruled over all human beings, even over those who did not sin in the same way that Adam did when he disobeyed God's command. Adam was a figure of the one who was to come, but the two are not the same because God's free gift is not like Adam's sin. It is true that many people died because of the sin of that man, but God's grace is much greater and so is his free gift to so many people through the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4. Did we have all those people reading that? Did I approve, ask people to read 2 Corinthians and Romans? 2 Corinthians 4, verses uh, 7 to 12. Yes, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 12. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Right. The last one, I don't know if I allocated anyone, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Hebrews chapter 2, I don't know. Did I give anyone to read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 to 11? I'll read, I'll read that I'll one. Read. Okay, go ahead. Hebrews 2, verses 9 to 12, right? 9 to 11? To 11, yes. Okay. And it says, in putting everything under them, God let nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might test death for everyone. In the beginning, many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Amen. Mm. Amen. Praise be to God. I, I wanted us to read together today the word of God so that I'm not trying to come here as someone is going to teach you, but I wanted the word of God to teach all of us tonight. Father, we are grateful for your word, and we thank you that we read your word tonight. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to activate it within us so that we understand what you have done for us. We thank you, Spirit of God, for teaching us. We thank you, Spirit of God, for giving us inner and deeper understanding so that we will know what the love of God looks like in our lives. Thank you, Spirit of God, tonight for speaking to us. Use these lips of clay. And I thank you that, Father, me and my brothers, today as we log off, we will know what you have in store for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I just want to 
uh, reconcile what we read tonight. I have been talking uh, why Jesus had to come and die. The case called death was the reason why Jesus had to come and die. We heard it from the scriptures. Uh, God calls this case sin. He died for our sin, not sins, S-I-N-S, -S, but Jesus died for our sin. The sin was committed in Genesis 3. We all know the story. Genesis chapter 3, we heard that the sin came by one man, Adam. That's a singular word, sin. So the sin was the sin of rebellion. Rebellion against the instruction of God. So we understand that where did death come from? Death did not come from the devil. I keep telling you that death was created by God himself. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 18. Death was there. It's only when God told Adam, when you eat this fruit, you will surely die. So God created death and not Satan. So God is talking to men the day you eat, you will surely die. So that means man was to live in obedience to God. You know, God is not a ruling dictator in heaven looking to punish us when we do wrong. His love is characterized by grace, by forgiveness, and his love is eternal and unconditional. Paul emphasizes this uniqueness of Jesus' death for the ungodly uh, with the word uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, where he says Jesus, uh, death for the ungodly happened whilst they were still sinners in a state of ungodliness, not when they were righteous. So God died for us whilst we were yet sinners. Like I spoke about this on Sunday. So you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. So he came to die for us because we could not help ourselves. To summarize the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, only one thing was happening. From Genesis, God was trying up to the book of Malachi. God was trying to bring back man who fell in Genesis chapter 3 to himself, back to himself. From Genesis to Malachi, he sent prophets, he sent all type of people to speak reconciliation. He used the blood of bulls, the blood of uh, a cow, the blood of goats, the blood of the lamb, he used the blood of pigeons to appease, to try and bring man to himself. But I want you to understand the word of God says in Romans 5, on verse 8 to 9, God proves his love for us in that whilst we were still sinners, Christ came. That's God himself. Christ is God. Three in one, Father, God, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Father, Son came to die for us. Therefore, since we have now been justified in his blood, I want to speak about being justified in his blood. How much more shall we be saved from the anger or from the wrath of God? I want you to understand that in verse 7, Paul clarifies this kind of death that Jesus, the righteous one, died for. The unrighteous by contrasting Jesus' snowball death for sinners. Who Jesus came as a hero. <laughs> uh, he was patriotic, right? His noble death in the ancient world. Ancient deaths were for a good or noble cause, according to Romans 5, verse um, 6 and 7. But now on verse 6, Paul refers to Jesus' death as a death for ungodly sinners. Ungodly sinners. Unlike the kind of death mentioned on verse 7. On verse 7, Paul states in verse 6 and again in verse 8 to 10 that Jesus died for unrighteous people to achieve their justification, their salvation and reconciliation. This is the reason for the death of Christ. So Paul explicitly 
mentions God's love for sinners in association with Jesus' death. He states God demonstrates his own love for us. Like while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This statement echoes John as remarks in chapter 3, verse 16. Both John and Paul suggest God's love is an action instead of a personal emotion. I want you to understand God's love is action, not an emotion, not a personal emotion. God's love is an action. Romans 5 verse 10, it says, For if we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through this life? I don't want you to forget the key word here is we were justified. We were justified. Romans 8 verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him, him who, Jesus, freely give us all things. Come on, there we qualify for everything that we desire in life. Yes, everything, I mean everything because of the death of Christ. We now qualify for everything that we need in Christ Jesus. Not outside Christ, but in Christ Jesus. So God decided to kill himself so that he did not have to kill you and me. God decided to kill himself so that he will not kill you and me. Because God created the whole universe for all of us, the universe. God created man in his own image. Remember, don't forget us. After his own likeness. So it is his love for this human creature. God cannot deny or violate his word, guys. God has to be faithful and stick to his word. So we were put under death because we were put under death because god cannot lie he is faithful to his word he had to fulfill and watch over his word to perform it so as christians we must know about the blood yes we sing hymns about the blood of jesus and we remember it during communion but how many of us truly know how deep its power runs and all that it has provided for you and me. Do you know, you know, Christians, we are at advantage. Before I go to talk about advantages of a Christian, I want you to know that this was not done for you and me in church only. This was done for every human being. If we've got eight or nine billion human beings on the face of the earth, it was the love of God for everyone, even those who cast God, the atheist, whoever the, the Gnostics, whoever who even say there's no God, they qualify for in this category that God loved them and died for them whilst they are sinners as they are. But God had already, has already he has already done it for them, even though they refuse to come to Christ, even though the they refuse to acknowledge that this death is for them, even though they refuse to acknowledge that there's a God who loves them, who created them. But I want you to know this still stands at their door. It's still shouting that Jesus died for them. It is still speaking. The blood of Jesus is still speaking to them. The blood of Jesus is still speaking to sinners. It, even those who say there's no God, the blood is still saying, I am here. Jesus came to die for all of them. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter that they curse God. It doesn't matter that they are running away. But this stands for every human being who will open his heart or a heart to accept it. Now, once you accept it, like I said last week, you stop being just the people of God. 
you qualify now you enter into a family and this family is a kingdom called the kingdom of god but how many of us truly know how deep the blood in the power runs in that blood of jesus and all that it has provided for us as human beings even more importantly how many of us use it to understand that i have been loved by god i'm so precious and i'm going to continue to thank god for the blood that was shed on calvary for my sins i want you to know that god had to kill himself he came to fulfill his word to himself through himself oh come on it is something you have to rejoice and praise god for that god had to come from heaven to kill himself he came to fulfill his word to himself and through himself. So God carrying out of a sentence of him, on himself, he sentenced himself so that you and me, we didn't have to die. We deserved to die. Our sentence was death. We were sentenced to die. He decided to satisfy the demands of his own faithfulness. God had to take a bullet for you and me God decided that he loves you too much. He loves men too much. And he had to come down. This is why even David asked God, hey, what is man that you are so mindful of him? What is man? How come you love men so much? You know, David was confused. He was surprised. What kind of love is this? God, why is it that you lose sleep over men? What is so important about men? God put his image on you. God put his reputation on you. God put his likeness of you. That's why you are so important. This is why you are so precious. This is why you matter. Good Friday is the manifestation of God's love for you. Good Friday is a day to remember God substituted man with himself. He became man. God decided to kill himself so that he would not kill you, so that he would not kill men, so that you would not go to hell. He gave his life, his life. It was not taken away from him. A lot of people, we think that the Romans crucified Jesus. Let me say they did not crucify him. He says, I lay down my life. Oh, I lay down my life for my friends. He gave his life. It was not taken away from him. Someone had to die to protect God's integrity, guys. Somebody had to die because God cannot lie. God cannot deny his word. He is one with his word. He is obligated to watch the performance of his word. This is why in Isaiah 53, he's the, from verse 3, he was despised and rejected by mankind. We, we are the ones who were death, sentenced to death. But when Jesus came, he was, the, oh, you know, before I continue to talk about Isaiah 53, first of all, I want you to understand something. Do you know that Jesus did not come to us, all of us, as we are sitting here? Initially, Jesus came to the Israelites. <laughs> he was sent for the Israelites, not for you and me. <laughs> but then they rejected him. <laughs> so when they rejected Jesus, ooh, we came in, we were grafted in. Oh my God. We became partakers, heirs together. We began to enjoy their inheritance. So now we enjoy the same inheritance with Israel. It was not meant for you and me. Brothers, this is why we talk of grace. Understand. This is why we talk of grace. We did not qualify. We were not worthy. That's why Jesus said, I came to my, to my own, to my own. My own did not include you and me. Remember him refusing to heal that woman. Remember, he refused to heal that woman's child. He said, I cannot give uh, healing to, 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 to dogs. <laughs> we were dogs. <laughs> but we want to thank God tonight. We want to thank God tonight that we also became heirs together with Israel. Today, we rejoice 
is part of Israel, that we are the children. We rejoice in the benefit that was supposed to only benefit the Israelites. So the word of God in Isaiah 53 is so clear to say that Jesus was despised. He was rejected by mankind, a man of great suffering. He suffered so much. He was familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Yet he took our pain. Today, I want to speak to you. If you have got any pain in your body, the word of God says Jesus took away your pain. He took away your shame. He took away your suffering. He took away being put down. He took away your poverty. He took away anything that opposed your life, anything that uh, threatens your life. He took away rejection. He took away the shame and embarrassment. He took away your disgrace. He took away your pain. Come on, somebody. Jesus took it away on his body. He took it for you and me. He took it tonight. Your suffering. He took it. He took everything for you. Why do you want to hold on to it? It's not yours tonight. I came to challenge you to lose it. Let go. It was nailed to the cross. Jesus took it. Come on, you got the right to speak as a child of God and say it was nailed to the cross. Oh, every legal, Colossians 2, 14, 15. Oh, illegal indebtedness, any generational curse, any curse over my life, any spirit that has been following me, it was nailed to the cross. I am free because Jesus set me free. He took away. He took away. He was despised. We held him in low esteem. But surely he took up our pain. Whatever is paining you, it might not just be physical pain. It may be emotional pain. He took it away and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for you and me. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Iniquities are those that has been done by our father. Sin is something that you can do right now and you repent that sin and you walk away from it. And when something that you are doing, you cannot stop it now. You find that I keep on doing this habit. I cannot stop it. No matter how much I want to stop it, I'm now failing to stop it. It now becomes a transgression. And then there are those that will really continue until it goes to the generations and generations, like generational cases, they've become iniquities. But listen, the word of God says, he was crushed for our iniquities. Ah, oh my God. It is saying now he was crushed for our iniquities, meaning that even what my grandfathers did, my God, Jesus, ha, ah, he was crushed for those iniquities. Whatever my grandmothers did, whatever my forefathers did, whatever the sour grapes that was affecting the children can no longer affect me because Jesus was crushed. He took away these iniquities. He took away the transgressions. So the word of God says knowledge is power. My people, they perish for lack of knowledge. Why do you keep believing? They keep following you. You got to get to a point where you know that I get power over them. I've got power because Jesus took them. It's my right. So when I pray, I speak the word that it was Jesus who took them. It was Jesus who was pierced for my transgressions, for the transgressions of my parents, for the transgressions of my ancestors. He was crushed for their iniquities. So the punishment that was brought uh, upon Jesus brought you and me. Now it brought us peace. It brought us peace. The punishment that brought us peace came from Jesus. It was upon him. Peace was on him. And now, it came to us and by his stripes, now we declare that we are healed. By his stripes, we declare that we are healed. Let me tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus. Sickness has to bow to the name of Jesus because we are healed by his stripes. We are healed 
by his stripes. So sickness must bow. It must bow not because I have the power, but because Jesus has already overcome this sickness 2,000 years ago. Don't be somebody who just run around every time you hear you've got cancer. You start running around. Oh, I've been told by the doctor I've got cancer. Come on, go back to the word. It says, by his stripes we are healed. It's not saying you are going to be healed. It's not saying it, you shall be healed. It's actually in the past tense. Oh, come on, somebody. Your healing is in the past tense. You are healed. You were healed by his stripes. Hallelujah. We were all like sheep gone astray. Each of us will turn to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He laid it upon himself our sins, our iniquities. So now I want you to understand Hebrews, the Hebrew book of Hebrews. Now we'll start something that I'll be talking about tomorrow, that Christ, after his death, after his resurrection, he was made heir. Hebrews chapter one, verse two, one to three. It talks about Christ now that he was made heir. Verse two and three elaborates on the fact that it is God's son who has spoken to us. So I want you to understand that Christ was appointed heir of all things. Through him, you, you, the world was not made without him. Through him, the world was made. Now Jesus, the same Jesus, has now become, he is the radiance of God's glory the exact representation of his nature and he upholds all things by the word of his power. So he was made purification of sins. And right now he is seated down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So I want you to know that Jesus Christ in connection with him becoming man and the characteristics of Christ, which are his as the eternal son of God, the deity. Now it's important that we understand this distinction between these two categories, because if we don't understand, then the rest might become very confusing. So tonight, as I close, I want you to know that Jesus Christ came to be nailed on the cross for you and me hallelujah it will be unfair for me to finish before going to colossians if you can turn to the book of colossians chapter 2 from verse 14 it says i'll read from verse i'll read from verse 13 it says you were at one time spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were gentiles without the law but god has now brought you to life with christ god forgave us all our sins god forgave us all our sins he cancelled i'm gonna change my vision here I'm going to read in King James, I think. I'm not sure if that's the one I want. I'm going to read again verse 14 now. It says, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. Having disarmed principalities and powers, and this is for Sunday, but I want you to just take time to look at verse 14. I want you to understand what verse 14 is saying to you and me in this closing tonight 
that having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us, come on somebody, and condemned us, it condemned you and me. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, nailing it to the cross. Jesus took away anything that is legal. If you, someone killed someone in your family, the spirit has a right to come and fight your family. Ngozi, they have a right to come and fight you and your family. It's, they've got a legal right to ask, why did you kill me? They have a legal right, but let me tell you tonight, even if you are here and you murdered, come on somebody, even if you are here tonight and you murdered somebody with a knife, you did it because you did it no right. But if you accept Jesus Christ tonight, that record is erased in heaven. Woo! Hallelujah. What a good Friday. What a good Friday. What a good Friday. Tonight, if you are here, you were holding on to your past sins. The devil has been telling you, you cannot make it because of A, B, C, D. Tonight is your night, good Friday. You are free. Tonight is your night. Nothing shall speak against you except the blood of Jesus Christ. Your legal indebtedness, come on somebody, which stood against you. For how long it doesn't matter, which condemned you, he has, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross tonight. He has taken it away from you. He has taken it away from your family. He has taken it away from your marriage. He has taken it away from your children. He has taken it away from your career. He has taken it away from your destiny. It's taken away, nailed to the cross. Up. Cancer, nailed to the cross. Up. Any unforgiven sin that nobody could forgive you. Jesus says, I'll forgive you because it was nailed to the cross. Tonight, I want you to know, it is God who has given you freedom. This is why we say, who the son of man sets free is free indeed. Who the son of man sets free is free indeed. You are free from demons. They cannot come and possess you anymore. You are a child of God. Even if they inflict your flesh, you got power over them. Remember the word of God says, Jesus is seated in high places. Come on, somebody. Jesus is now seated in high places with the Father. I want you to know tonight in the name of Jesus that Jesus has brought your salvation. He has bought your freedom. He has set you free. He has liberated you. He has brought you joy. He has brought, you must rejoice. You must tell that depression. Tell that depression. You don't belong to me. Ah, you were nailed to the cross. You need to tell that poverty. Hey, I'm not your candidate. You were nailed to the cross. You need to tell that sickness. Hey, I am not your candidate. You were nailed to the cross. Tonight, your mindset must accept the word that says who the son of man sets free is free indeed you are free from demons if you keep thinking demons they'll come if you keep thinking you are in bondage you'll continue in bondage but if you continue from this day to embrace this truth if you continue today that you prayed against generational curses and they are broken over your life you are free for good but if you continue to think oh i got demons that's why this is not working hey i got demons how can did these demons these generational cases they will continue to haunt you listen the blood did it once and once for all once and once and for all once and once and for all once and once and for all come on say it the blood set me free once and once for all i am free i am free because he took it and nailed it to the cross tonight as i close I want to speak to you and say, child of God, tonight you are free because of one man. 
Sin came through the world through one man, Adam. But Jesus is the man who came with your freedom tonight. I want you to walk away as you go to sleep. Come on, go and sleep. Anything that was harassing you tonight, speak to it and say, hey, I am free. Hey, I nailed this to the cross. Come on, somebody, you need that freedom. You need to declare tonight that I am free. I am free. I am free. Good Friday is a day of rejoicing. Good Friday is a joy of understanding that he did it for me. I am free. I'm no longer under bondage. The Bible says he has transferred me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The day Jesus was crucified was today. The Bible says a veil tore. <laughs> a veil, my God. A veil tore. Come on, somebody. A veil that was between us and God. It was torn and we got the access to the Father. You are a child of God. You are an inheritance. You are an heir. We have got an inheritance in Christ Jesus. You need knowledge. You need to know tonight when you pray, you are not a grasshopper. Stop praying like, oh God, me a grasshopper. You are not a grasshopper. You are not useless. You are not a nobody. I don't care how many jets you've got. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I don't care how much money you've got. I'm important to God. I'm so special. I got so much value. I know who I am. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. Tonight, I want you to raise your hands wherever you are. I want you to declare in the name of Jesus your freedom. I want you to declare, I want you to change your prayer. You are not a nobody. Come on, you are not under demonic curses. Come on, you are free from every curse. You are not under spells. Come on, you are free from them. In the name of Jesus, your freedom is in Jesus Christ. I want you to declare that I am free. I'm a child of God. I am an heir together with Christ Jesus who came to die for my sins. I want you to lift your hands wherever you are and begin to declare your freedom. Begin to declare who you are in Christ Jesus. God of impossibilities. He who doesn't hold any sins in my life. The moment I accepted Jesus, no matter what I did, the Bible says he will forget them as far as the east is from the west. That's how far your sin will be. Come on, somebody. Stop thinking about I did this two weeks ago. Jesus has died on the cross for you. He nailed your sin to the cross. There is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You are free child of God. You are free child of God. God loves you so much for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, shall not die but have everlasting life. Come into the kingdom. You are part of the family. You are part of the family. Begin to enjoy the benefits you have in the kingdom. Father is calling you back home. Come on, enjoy. Sit on the high table. Hey, you are an heir together with Christ tonight. You got to enjoy health. You got to enjoy prosperity. You got to enjoy success. You got to enjoy career advancement. Huh? You are free. You got to enjoy everything because he has got your back. He has got your back. He has got your back. He covered it all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you are here tonight and you are sitting on the fence and you are not in this kingdom, you are a maybe. I want you to accept Jesus because without Jesus, you cannot make it into the kingdom of God. You need to receive Christ is your Lord and personal Savior tonight so that you can enjoy what Good Friday did, what Good Friday did for you. Tonight, I encourage you, if you are here and you want to accept Christ, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept that you are a child of God, that you died for me on the cross. I choose today to follow you. Be the Lord and savior of my life. 
Father God, I give my life to you. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tonight, in my closing, I want to thank all of you for being here. And I want you to know that if you made this prayer of receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to know that Jesus has come. <clears throat> he doesn't come alone, by the way. You might not feel some jig, 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 jig in your body, it's okay. But there's some jig, jig, jig in your heart. You see, you don't see your liver, but you know that you've got it right. You don't see your pancreas, you've never touched your pancreas, right? But it's in your body, right? So it's the same way Jesus comes in. He doesn't come alone. He comes with the Father. He comes with the Son. And he comes with the Holy Ghost. So tonight the three have come. And if you accepted Jesus, you are no longer the same. When you walk into the room, light is going to go bam. The light has come and darkness cannot stand that light. You are a child of light. You are a child of God. Fear not. So tonight, I want to say congratulations if you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Reach out to me and let's talk 651-440-8737 is my number, 651-440-8737. Pastor Rebecca, reach out to me, let's talk so that you may know where to go next from here. I want to hand over time back to our MC if there's any announcements and then I can close. Thank you. Amen. 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 We thank God for such a powerful message. Um, just a reminder, tomorrow we meet at church, 4.30, Recording we'll stop. Church. Um, we so don't miss out be there 4 30 on time please so that we can finish early we father we thank you for each and everyone who came to uh, attend this good friday father we are grateful we are excited we embrace what you've done for us and we declare our freedom in Christ Jesus tonight, for we know that we are your children, and we are excited by what you are doing. Father, I pray that tonight, if there's any among us who is still here or sick, let them embrace this word and declare over themselves that by his stripes they are healed. Father, we thank you, we bless your name, we honor you, and we love you, Lord Jesus. Bless each and everyone until we meet again tomorrow. Let this power of an understanding of what Jesus did on the cross continue to remind us who we are in Christ. Let the blood continue to speak on our behalf. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I bless your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Surely, goodness and mercy. Amen. God bless you.